of Palmyra, Indiana, is under a boil water advisory. Clerk Treasurer Deborah Jones made the announcement just before 1 a.m. saying there was a water main break. As we learn more about the cause and let you know when the boil water advisory is lifted, watch out for us on air and online at whas11.com. It's a sad end to the search for a woman missing in Jefferson Memorial Forest since Thursday. Lyndon Bray was found dead in the Fairdale Forest late Friday afternoon. Police say they've started a death investigation. WHAS 11's Taylor Woods and senior photojournalist Alyssa Newton report what we know so far. Yellow crime scene tape roped off in the Paul Yo's Recreation Area at Jefferson Memorial Forest in Fairdale. After an extensive search that started Thursday night, the body of 24-year-old Lyndon Bray was discovered in the woods. Louisville Metro Police Department confirming her body was found in this area. And it was this trail right here that LMPD crime scene unit focused on the most. That's where they found some of her belongings and ultimately 24-year-old Lyndon Bray. The 24 year old was last seen walking this forest with her dogs around 5 o'clock Thursday evening. Bray was last seen wearing cut off jean shorts and a blue shirt. Both of her dogs were also found roaming in the area. There were emotional cries that could be heard from those who received the devastating news that it was Lyndon who had been found dead. Right now, Louisville Metro Police are calling this a death investigation, and the cause of death is to be determined by the Jefferson County Coroner. At Jefferson Memorial Forest, Taylor Woods, WHAS 11 on your side. In some other headlines now, a little girl shot in a road rage incident Monday may never walk again. That's according to a GoFundMe post for six-year-old Onyx. The post says she was inside her father's car when she was shot in the back, severing her spine. Earlier this week, police told us three motorcyclists and the car got into an altercation on I-65 near the outer loop, continuing north on the interstate. The motorcyclist opened fire on the car, hitting the girl. Only one arrest has been made in connection to the shooting, and police told us they anticipate closing the case in the near future. The GoFundMe has raised more than $7,000 of its $10,000 goal. We have a link to donate on our website, whas11.com. Just a month before the start of football season, a major shakeup for one JCPS team. Manual head coach Donnie Stoner has been temporarily removed from his coaching responsibilities per JCPS's policies and practices. The school's athletic director sent a letter Friday to the families on the football team. It did not indicate what happened or how long the situation could last. Manual appointed assistant coach Josh Gillespie as acting head coach until further notice. We're learning more about the November riot at the Adair County Juvenile Detention Center and how it may be related to a fire at the Louisville Juvenile Detention Center. Officials say a few days before the riot, some juveniles were transferred to Adair County from the Jefferson Juvenile Detention Center. They were transferred after routine testing found problems with the fire system in Linden. The riot in Adair County happened after that transfer. Juvenile justice officials testified Friday, saying the staff did not have time for a proper intake and could not identify the transfer's gang affiliations. The booking system includes areas to identify gang informa information, such as descriptions of tattoos and photographs, but it does not have required fields, is not designed to generate reports, and is used inconsistently. If information had been entered consistently, staff may have been able to identify the security risk despite the time frame. Lawmakers also heard from the secretary of the Department for Juvenile Justice, Vicki Reed. She said there's an issue with staffing, but it has gotten better with recent pay raises. A federal judge in Louisville has overturned his own injunction against parts of Senate Bill 150, meaning the ban on gender affirming care for minors can go into effect. Two weeks ago, federal judge David Hale granted the injunction, which initially blocked that provision. The ACLU, representing families of transgender children, made the request. Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron then appealed, and Friday, Judge Hale sided with Cameron. He said the decision is based on precedent set by a similar case out of Tennessee. An appellate court there allowed a Tennessee law banning gender-affirming care for minors to go forward recently. In a statement, Cameron called the ruling a win for parents and children. Cameron says he's grateful for, to the court for doing what he says the law requires. The ACLU responded saying the fight isn't over and it remains optimistic about winning the case.